In this tutorial in Microsoft Access, we're going to look at something that sometimes we put off, which is design decisions for your database. What I've found from real life experience is that if I don't make careful decisions to start with, I wind up doing a lot of work over again because I made mistakes. So let me show you a little bit about how to think that through. You might design on a spreadsheet, you might design on a pad with a pen or pencil, uh, but let me show you a little bit about some things to consider when you're developing your database design. Uh, I have a database uh, for our church's library that I wrote, and to show you how, they're, how all the tables are structured, I'm going to click above the ribbon to Database Tools, and then click on Relationships. This shows the five most important tables in my library database and how they connect one with the other. Now the power of a database is so long as these tables are connected, you can make reports using some information out of all of the tables as you hook them together with a query or some other kind of tool within Access. Let's look at some of the fundamental things. My, my, my primary table, obviously, is my books. And I have a book ID for each book. Um, I would use the, uh, normally I would use the identifier on the back of the book, the ISBN code, if I only have one of each copy. But if I have more than one, I need to assign it a different number. Then I have stuff like a title, the, the type of the book, uh, the idea of the author and the subject. I have some other stuff I won't uh, explain right now. But then the other thing I have that supports my book list is subjects. And here I have an ID and a list of subjects. Obviously, this is a one-to-many relationship. And so when I'm looking at a subject, it will actually go into this table, look at the alphabetical list and say, what's the subject of this book? And I can have multiple books that, that use the same subject. Also, I can have multiple books that use the same author. So I have an author table with first, middle, and last name, and I can feed that into this field. Now, this assumes only one author or prime author per book. Uh, you'd have to adjust this if you wanted to do multiple authors. Another, so the book table is basically built around a subject and an author that fuel into this. The other table that I use in my library is loans. This is where we actually check out the book. And so you have two tables that factor into a loan. You have the book, which factors in with, through book ID, and then you have the person who checks it out, which is tied to my adults table. And so we have a checkout date, a return date, a renewal date, other kinds of things in the loan table. But we also have more information in the adults table simply besides the person's name because we want to send them an email or contact them in some way when their book is overdue. I also use that to print borrower cards from the adults table. Uh, this is an example of the kinds of decisions you have to make when you begin to design your database. You want as much information to appear only once and in the table where you think it belongs the best. For example, I don't want to uh, take whether or not my book has been inventoried recently and put that in the adults table or the loan table or any others. So if you think this through carefully, it will save you some time as you think, what do I need and what should support my major operating tables? And here I have two, the books and obviously the loans. So this is an example of some of the kind of thinking you can bring into your database. Uh, let me give you another example. Now you see on the screen a table that we have uh, for vouchers that we give to people. And uh, I put in some fictional information, but we can do all kinds of reports here to show uh, 
where we're able to help people, who we're helping, how often and when and for what. And so what I have here is I'll click on the external data tab on this one and, and I'm sorry, database tools, and then we'll click on relationships. And here we have a similar uh, process. Uh, the core here is the vouchers. And the vouchers are tied to several different vendors. One might be a uh, gas station, one might be a grocery store where we issue a voucher that they will honor. And so we have several different vendors and we have a separate table for that. We also have uh, another table of who authorizes the vouchers and we put in different names of people who can do that along with contact information and that fuels in to this one to many relationships in, in the authorized by field of my vouchers. We also obviously have the recipients who's the voucher for and so we've created another table with some background information about the, the people that we're able to help. And so uh, this is the centerpiece here of our database, but we use three supporting tables in order to uh, create the kind of reports that we want to in this system. Once again, a different way of thinking through how shall we do this so this can be most effective. And so I encourage you to chart it out as you begin to think, how can I create a database that can be maximum in efficiency and flexibility?